Hey, what's up, Rob Zombie? This is the Weinstein Company. My name is Bob. We would like for you to do the second Halloween film. And you have complete creative control. What the hell was I thinking? What's going on guys and welcome to another reputized video! Halloween 2 is directed once again by Rob Zombie and stars Scout Taylor Compton, Malcolm McDowell, Brad Dorff, Danielle Harris, and Tyler Maine. The story follows one or two years later depending on which what version of the movie you watch. After the events of the first one, Lori struggles to deal with Michael's return and knowing that he's her brother as well. Alright, this movie was a little bit of a mess. And I'll get to the nitty gritty on why that is. The characters was about the same as the first one. But Laurie's character took it to a whole new level of annoying. She was already annoying enough in the first one. This one, she went nuclear. There were scenes where she was screaming out the top of her lungs. She would overact. And I don't know if it was the, if because of the writing or the direction that they gave Compton's character to do. But it was just so annoying. After she finds out that Michael is her brother, she just goes off the rails. Now, I'm not trying to make fun of the woman or anybody that acts like this. I mean, anybody that finds out that they got a lunatic for an uncle or a brother or a sister or whatever, they would get to me too. But if you compare Compton's character of Lori to Jamie's character of Lori, she had more head on her shoulder. She was more calm. Cool, collective, I like that. Compton wasn't. She was just so annoying and I just, I couldn't get into her character. It's like, you know, chill the F out, would you? Loomis is more of an asshole in this. Donald Pleasance would be rolling over in his grave right now. They just disrespected that character to the max. And I, I just, I hated that. You disrespect a great character like Loomis, then you disrespect the actor that played him before. The writing and direction by Rob Zombie, it wasn't that clear. Michael is wanting to find his sister once again. But when he does, he doesn't really seem keen on killing her. Like, right off the bat anyway. Not like how he did in the originals. Oh, and there's a white horse in this. What the f he sees his dead mother with a white horse. I don't know what the hell that's about. That's just a part of the poor and lazy, very unsatisfying and poor choice of writing. The editing by Glenn Garland was okay. There was like shaky cameras and close-up shots. You know, just like the first one. The first one was filmed as in a uh, 2.39 aspect ratio, I believe. But this one was filmed in the 1.85 aspect ratio. So it made it wider, even closer. I didn't really agree with the way the film was edited and the way the film was shot because there's just so much of... It was a little bit annoying. The music by Tyler Bates, like the first one, was pretty good. But I've got a big problem with the music all around. The original Halloween theme wasn't in this. What the hell? If it wasn't bad enough that they put a white horse in this and his dead mother every time Michael would blink, they don't add the Halloween score, the, the score that made this series famous, not until like the last few minutes. Rob Zombie actually stated in an interview saying that that score didn't fit the atmosphere of this movie. And apparently because Rob Zombie had creative control, which is why it wasn't a good idea to do this in the first place. That's why that happened. Rob Zombie, don't give up your day job as a rocker. Come on, man. Phil Parment did the cinematography and lighting in the first one. And like the first one in this one, Brandon Trost takes over that role. And it, it was about the same. Like I say, it was more dark. It was more grittier. And with the shaky camera and everything, it was, it was a little hard to catch what you were seeing. But as far as I could tell, the lighting and the cinematography and like that aspect of it was about the same as the original, but it was darker. Not bad, bad, or terrible, if it wasn't for that damn shaky camera. The feel of this movie was very different. It didn't really feel like a Halloween movie, mainly because the famous score wasn't in it until like the last few minutes. The score, that famous 
John Carpenter's score is what makes Michael him. That's all I'm saying. The pros, Michael's brutality. Oh my God. The ones who hasn't seen this movie, be warned. There's a lot of gore. There's a lot of stabbings. There's a lot of brutality in it. I'm surprised the MPAA let most of this stuff slide. Most filmmakers has, have to send their films into the MPAA several times to get a rating approval. This one apparently, I don't know how many times they sent it in, but I think they had to a lot. But the final product, and this is the theatrical version, the one that hit theaters, not the underrated, mind you, the theatrical version. It was really brutal. It showed plenty of gore, even more than Curse, even more than the last one, or any of the others. I'm surprised the MPAA let them slide on a lot of things in this. But that's a good thing. I, that's what saved it for me. If it wasn't for that, this movie would just be about a guy in a white, a white mask chasing after his sister. It wouldn't be Halloween per se, even though Bianca Meyer's in it. Plus the fact that he's unmasked in most of this movie. Another poor choice of direction. And the cons, the story was a little bit of a mess. It was scrambled. You couldn't really figure out what, where the movie was going. All you know about it is Michael chasing after his sister when, when he actually does. His dead mother in his mind keeps on saying, take us home, take us home. I guess that means, okay, kill her, kill yourself, and then we'll be in hell. I don't know. But the story was messy. It just, it, it didn't really work. It wasn't that classy vibe that the original movies gave off. It wasn't, it just, it wasn't good. My final thoughts on this movie, other than Michael's brutality and Tyler Mayne's portrayal of that character, which was awesome, it wasn't that memorable. It wasn't one of those movies where you go, would you tell a friend about probably, most likely. And it wasn't one of those that was like, oh, that was the best Halloween ever. Nah. Yeah, this was just one of those swing and a miss movies that you could probably enjoy on a Halloween night or a Halloween season. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 gets a D plus. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I really do appreciate it. My next review will be on Night School, starring Kevin Hart, and then Venom this weekend. And then, the new Halloween movie. I'm very excited, guys. Like, subscribe, get ready to tie, share this video. Peace to Empire.